The Periodic Table's Island of Stability The Island of Stability, located in the uncharted regions of the lower periodic table, is a hypothesized group of super-heavy elements that do not decay despite their atomic weight. Whereas most transuranic elements, elements that almost never occur in nature, decay too quickly and energetically to be practically applied to much more than atomic energy, elements in the island of stability would, according to theory, not decay, and in addition would have many other properties that would make them useful for a number of purposes. To understand the island of stability, one has to understand atomic structure and the reason behind atomic decay. Atoms are comprised of protons, neutrons, and electrons, the latter of the three found in a cloud around the center of the atom, and the first two located in the center, known as the nucleus. Protons, possessing a positive charge, naturally repel each other in the nucleus due to the Coulomb force and have to be bound in the nucleus by neutrons and the nuclear strong force. As elements go down the periodic table and the number of protons and neutrons increases, the strong force required to hold the protons in the nucleus also increases, and the elements become more and more unstable. If the repulsion of the protons is too strong to be countered by the strong force, the atom can decay in three different ways. The first, alpha decay, is an emission of two protons and two neutrons. Beta decay is an emission of an electron or positron due to either protons or neutrons being transformed into the other, and gamma decay is an emission of energized photons. The speed at which a given amount of a radioactive substance decays is given by the half-life of the substance, the time after which half of the substance will remain and half of the substance will have turned into something else. It logically follows that as elements go down the periodic table and become more radioactive, they decay at a faster rate. These ideas originated in the latter half of the 19th century with the studies of Henry Becquerel, the Curies, Ernest Rutherford, and Hans Geiger, and evolved throughout the 20th century into what we know today. With the discovery and implementation of nuclear fission in the 1930s and 1940s, scientists discovered that splitting the atom could release the energy contained in the nucleus to hold together the protons and neutrons. To create the second of the bombs used in the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Fat Man, scientists used plutonium, created by irradiating uranium in a nuclear reactor. Plutonium, the first of the transuranic elements created by humans, gave rise to the idea that more elements could be synthesized in reactors. One of the scientists key in synthesizing the plutonium in the Fat Man, Enrico Fermi, had come up with the idea of transuranic elements in 1934. Glenn Seaborg, a scientist involved in the Manhattan Project, continued his work after the conclusion of the war, and was arguably the most important scientist in the field of synthetic elements. In addition to helping discover plutonium and neptunium, Seaborg developed the idea of the actinide and transactinide series and discovered ten new elements. At a younger age, Seaborg had read many other scientists' work on radiation and was influenced by his time working on the Manhattan Project. He spent several years teaching at UC Berkeley and used the cyclotron at the Lawrence Laboratory to study synthetic radiation. It was at this laboratory that Seaborg created many new elements. However, Seaborg's experiments ground to a halt when the cyclotron was unable to create bigger elements. In the 1950s, scientists introduced a new model of the atom in which protons and neutrons were organized in rings in the nucleus, similar to electron shells. These shells would be extremely stable when a so-called magical number of protons and neutrons was packed into them. This prediction led Seaborg to postulate the existence of the island of stability and a method of creating such heavy atoms. Instead of adding individual protons and neutrons, Seaborg proposed adding several of both at the same time, essentially smashing together elements to see what would come out of them. 
Seaborg unfortunately suffered a stroke before any new elements could be synthesized by his friends or students, but in 1998, scientists at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Russia, in collaboration with American researchers, synthetically created element 114, now known as fluorovium, by fusing calcium-48 atoms with plutonium-244. Later, more isotopes of fluorovium were created by altering the isotopes of either calcium or plutonium used in the reaction. Following the successful creation of element 114, scientists in Russia and America synthesized elements 115 and 116, and as recently as 2010, the Russian-American team has managed to synthesize element 117, with Japan claiming to have done it as well. With every new synthetic element, scientists bring the periodic table closer to the hypothetical island of stability, a discovery that might truly change nuclear physics as we know it. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational videos. Check out some of the other videos on this channel, or check out the featured channels for more content.